Hey, welcome to Rust Revival Garage. My name is Tim. For six long months now, I've been working on my rewiring project for my 1968 Pontiac Le Mans. It's taken so long because I did the power tour, a bunch of other car shows, had to do other things with other vehicles, but I am on the home stretch. Um, I, the only thing I have left now is the taillight section. So here we go, let's get to it. This is all that's left. This is the taillight wiring and actually had to pick up some more of the terminals. Not Painless's fault, um, just mine from just ruining too many as I'm trying to get the hang of it. I did pick up this a while back. I don't think I showed it, but this has been really good. You're able to get the clip in there. As you can see, it's the same shape as the terminals. And then you squeeze it down and it does crimp it really, really well. You do have to sort of, because they're out at a V, I do have to pull them in a little bit, put that down in there, make sure the wire's in tight, clamp this down, and it's done a really, really good job for me. I'm Now that I'm getting towards the end, it's actually, I'm starting to get a lot better at doing my crimps. But yeah, I did have to pick up extras. So the first thing I need to do is the dome light. Um, that's, even though this is the tail light section, um, the dome light is still part of it and it is, I believe it is this white wire. Yep. This is the dome light power wire. And I believe it said that there is also a black ground wire. So I'm going to have to dig it out of this mess. Um, what's going to happen is the, this white wire will go to the dome light is full on all the time power. The black wire is the ground that comes out and gives us the ground and it either goes to the headlight switch or the door jams um i've got I, the the door jams did work um i've got a new set that i can use but i just need to figure out whether i go to the headlight or door jam i'm not sure sort of need to do some looking into that to see which one the other thing I'm not going to do is put in all the way my dash. Um, only because if I've done something wrong or need to get access, it's going to be crazy to have to try to get this thing off. Um, the only concern I'll have is I won't be able to test it without grounding it. The problem is, is that the dash goes in and it grounds right here to these two sections here. The back of the dash is all connected so everything all the way across is grounded out so this one this bolt is my ground for this section this bolt is my ground for this section and sometimes it can go all the way over to ground out you know pretty much everything on here um, so these are my grounds but if I can't put this all the way back up it's not going to be grounded so I can't see hey do the lights do the instrument panel lights work do the, you know all that turn signal lights work so I may have to hook up a ground wire to the dash just so I can test it. Okay, I think I've shown this before, but the old wiring that goes to the tail lights is under here. And it's in this, I'm going to clean this out. It's in this sort of little plastic container. This runs under the driver's seat. I believe it goes back through this seat and then end of the trunk. I need to get this all cleaned up. All right, so I got it a little cleaned up. Got the uh, SEPA, ooh, money. It's always nice. Save on the uh, restoration there. Um, but yeah, got uh, the seatbelt taken out and looks like it's pretty much going along here and back in through the seat. So it looks like I'm gonna have to take the seat out too, I guess. So how do you get the back seat out? Well, you have to take the bottom piece off first. Then there's a couple of screws down here, a couple of hooks up there to lift that top part out. But I kind of wanted to show you this in case you've got a 68 to 72 GM. This little piece here, I'm not sure if you can see it or not. There's a little spring going through this two this two sections here and it curves up 
And so what we need to do is lift up that section. All right, so I've got, this is just a simple pry bar I had got from Jigs. And let's see if I can do it with one hand. There we go. So if you go all the way in with it, you can lift that up. And then what we want to do is pull back and repeat on the other side. That'll help us get out uh, the bus the seat bottom. See, it's now setting up up on top of it. Okay, so I got the other side done. Oh, that's always nice. Just curious to see if there was any build sheet in here. Never been in here before. In fact, this has probably not been out since it was built. And then it's just a matter of taking out this one and the one over there, and then lifting it up, and then that should come out. fun so I don't know if you need to remove all this stuff or not but in order to get everything <sighs> out of shape I'm fat and I'm old but in order to get the old wires out as you can see there's clips all along here that hold that plastic wiring loom in so I'm gonna do it right and Maybe even use the same plastic to protect my wires and run them up there the same way. But now we have full access. And again, you might be able to cut the wires in the front, drag them through the back and fish them through. You don't necessarily need to do all this, but I um, am planning on getting it as close to original as possible and don't have to have to sit and fish wires all the time. So hopefully I can, get this all cleaned up again. It's going to require some new with a kill mat down here, new carpet, new all that stuff too. So open up the can of worms, but um, let's get on with the uh, taillight wiring. Got my lines sort of stretched out. Wanted to kind of figure out what's going on. Um, I do know that this white one is for the dome light. This black one is also for the dome light and I wasn't sure where it went. So what I did was I traced it all the way back up and it turns out it was already in the wiring for the headlight switch. So this black one right here is the ground for the dome light. This is 961 and this is 961. So these are the first two wires that I sort of need to think about when it comes to my dome light wiring. Then the rest of these are, again, for the turn signals, park lights, brake lights, that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, I just need to, I guess, figure out where all of these join up in the trunk. I took the wiring out of this sort of plastic case that's along through here. There are no, there is a white wire. There is a white wire, but there are no black wires. And it does look pretty close to the wiring that I'm putting in, at least color-wise. Um, so I'm, I'm going to have to see what happened with the original um, dome light ground. I'm going to see where the wire goes from up here. What comes, what, what two wires go up to this from the trunk? Also, I've got it off the clips and it looks like everything goes to this little bit of taped up wire up here. Looks like all of that wiring goes right there. Now it looks like, from what I can tell, there's an orange, maybe orange and yellow, orange and white going up 
That's probably my dome light. I'm going to have to tap into those. I cannot cut those because those are, uh, I'd have to take the headliner out. And my dome light does work. So I'm just going to tap my wi existing wires into that. Oh, this ought to be fun. Oh. <laughs> Getting out is going to be the hard part. No. Oh. Yep, orange and tan, orange and yellow are going up to my dome light. Let's see if we can get you in here. So there is a little clip right here that the harness was sitting down in, the black wire, like this. So great, there's actually a plug right here. I can unplug this, take these wires off, use this plug, use this plug to just plug into my existing dome light and my, um, so that's good news. Now I know what color. The orange and the yellow were the ground and the power for my dome light. All right, so there is a little clip that clips on and holds it on there and so this is my old wiring i'm going to leave this one in there cut this plug off and tap my new wires my black and my white one into this and the rest of the wiring is going oh it's going back along here along some clips down here to this side of the tail light, brake light, park light, and then running across this way to the other side. Oh, oh my God, not fun. So this is going to the park light. There's one wire coming off of this. These are dropping down into uh, the brake and tail lights. Coming along here and stopping at, I believe, fuel sending unit. Just a guess. Along through here to the other connection for the tail and brake lights, and then up to that parking light. So that's really all we have back here. And yeah, if I'm right, I'm pretty sure this is the fuel sending unit. But maybe not. All right, so it look, looks like this is coming up here to a license plate bulb. And then if you can see back there, that little it looks like a little rubber piece on the top that's going down. That is actually the fuel sending unit. Again, I don't want to drop this tank. Pretty sure I, because I did the tank before I even started the channel. And I ran, I, I hooked up that wire correctly, grounded it and everything. So we should be good. I just need to then attach the wire maybe above this point and that will go down to that. Then this, I honestly did not know. Oh yeah, there is. It looks super cloudy. I'm not sure if you can see it, but there is a license plate bulb right here. So cool. Um, <laughs> that, that does not look the best, um, but at least I know I've got it and I can wire it up. Oh, these old clips. Anyway, let's see if I can get this apart. So there we go. Now these have these really tricky terminals. I've never even seen these before. Um, but this is what can basically cut off here, attach my new wires to this, reuse this switch, and we should be good to go. One thing I did want to note for myself is it looks like there are four wires. 
no, one, two, three, four, five wires going down in. And then of this, there's one breaking off for the parking light. So there's three, there's four going in, two brown, a lighter green and a darker green. But coming out, two green, two brown and a lighter green. From the old wiring, these are my, the sort of, the one I thought was tan is actually white because this one's been buried for years. So the white and the orange, tan orange, all led to this piece here. You can see there's an orange one in there together right here. So this was the connection for my door jam um, and the headlight switch and to turn on and off the dome light. Now what I did was this connected to something, uh, another piece on the original wiring harness. So I took, the, I took a look at the old one and I noticed something interesting. The tan one comes in right there and two orange come out which means what they did was they branched them off one would go to the headlight switch one would go to the door jam that's what I need to do I'm over at my passenger side taking off I've already got the other one off on the other side but I kind of want to see what this wiring looks like I have a feeling it might just be one wire Yep, I knew it. So here's what has to happen. The door jam, the door jam over there is going to have, I'm going to cut the black ground wire, add another wire to that, go to my door jam on the passenger side. That door jam has two prongs, two terminals, and I'll plug the other one in and I'll, I'll run it, uh, I'll run that wire over to here. That way, when either of the door jams open, this light comes on, the dome light comes on. Whenever we switch the headlight switch, the dome light comes on. That's good to know. I wondered what this wire down here was. All right, so this is, it's, it's basically one complete ground unit. Got it, good to know. And see, this one has a second prong. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. This one has a terminal going in on one side the other side is empty, so it doesn't matter which one I use. I just know that one of these sides will be empty. Okay, so here's what I've done. My 961 black ground wire for the dome light that went to the headlight switch, cut that one, and I used from the kit uh, a piece that goes from, basically from one wire into two wires, so it's a little thicker on this side. I put a, an extra wire into that and that's going to plug into my, um, from up here, it's gonna plug into my door jam switch. So, as you can see, I didn't wanna cut it from down there where it's going up into here. What I can do, this will be up in here. Sorry. This will be up in here at the headlight switch. And then I'll have this one run over to the door jam switch. From the door jam switch, I'm gonna add another wire. This one will plug into the other side of the door jam switch, and then I will run that wire over to that side. Now, because I am using these old connectors, I took a little wire brush to them to make sure that they were nice and cleaned off and I'd get a good connection. Plus, I taped everything off and I retaped my headlight switch wiring going past where I'm extending out into the uh, door jam switch. Now, my suggestion would not be to put the door jam switch in. It would be to bring your wires out, connect it to the new door jam switch, and then put it back in that way. And then we just use a 7 16th to get that tightened back up. And now we've got a brand new door switch. The wiring is old, but I didn't have those terminals. There's some really super small terminals. So I use those and then I can run this wire 
across to the other side and repeat it over there. There we go. Okay, so I've taken my old wires and pulled them through the trunk. Now, like I said, I'm going to reuse this plastic piece. This is a great little item that keeps them flat and they'll fit into the notches in the back seat there. And it's way cheaper than using what is roughly going to be about 12, 15 feet of tape. Um, so yeah, and I think it works fairly well. So I'm going to go ahead and pack these back in here. And this is going to be like trying to herd cats. Because this thing is not quite as bendable as it once was. Oh yeah. You don't want to see me hassling with this, so I will get back to you. Got all my wires tucked in here until we're coming out the end. What they did back there was uh, the wires went right up to that point. They went through the hole here and then they were taped off the rest of the way, wrapping around through the trunk. So that's what we'll do. And just like that, all my wires are run to the trunk. Okay, I've got my two dome light wires cut and I'm back in the trunk again. <laughs> um, and I've got the little connector uh, set up so I can actually just insert my two wires into this and plug it back in. From what I remember, the orange was the ground that went all the way up and split off into the jam section and the headlight switch and the uh, white one was the power. So I'm going to put the power in here and the black into the orange. There we go. So that is connected. Uh, now I just sort of need to tape up everything and get it tucked away. Okay, so I've got everything taped up. Got that back in the clip. And I can start fishing it all the way down. Let's take a look at our lighting situation behind the taillights. Found out I need to be extra careful with these taillights because they're either not available anymore or they are ridiculously expensive. Now with these kind of taillights I don't have like a separate set that is the brake lights is the whatever. They're basically two banks, one on this side, one on the passenger side. And it's both tail lights and reverse light all within this. This is interesting. There's no real easy way to get in here. Hmm. You can change the bulbs, but the wiring is kind of hidden. So, yeah, I checked underneath here. Short of removing the bumper, I have no way to access my taillights. Huh. And I am not taking the bumper off. There is a screw here and another one over here. That looks like it's what's holding the bumper. Is this to the bumper? But there's no access from in here either. I think what I'm going to have to do is hook into the old wiring. Again, just connecting into this, plugging this back into that. There's really no alternative. I mean, again, I could take off the bumper, but 
these all worked. So unfortunately, I won't really be able to show how to hook up each of the individual lights. Um, so yeah, that's that's the only problem. There are three wires going in. They really had four coming out, and it was the reverse light, and the reverse light goes in, then it daisy chained and came back out to probably run to this reverse light on this side. So the daisy chain can still be set up. All right, let me take a look at my wiring. So the dark green, let's see, we're looking at the passenger side. Brown breaks off, goes to the side marker, I know that. And then one goes in for the tail light, one goes in for the turn signal and brake light, and then this green one actually goes in as well. Same thing here. So it's the yellow for the right turn brake. One brown breaks off and goes to the parking light. One goes in for the tail light and brake light. And the green also will go in to that same prong. There's one green, so that's going to daisy chain back over to this, or light green for the reverse light. And then they have a brown daisy chaining back over here to this light. And then looking at my, put down everything pretty much for me, for my wiring. The brown is of course the tail lights, and dark green is the right turn, light green's reverse. The tan is the fuel sender, yellow is the left turn signal. It's also yellow, then there's pink for the fuel line, light green is also reverse, dark green is also right turn, and then they also have the brown for the tail light and brake lights. So, I guess I'm just going to have to hook up into my existing terminals and plug them back in. So I got in here and cleaned up the grounds, I replaced the lights, and hopefully this is as good as I can do to make sure everything works fine. But everything is at least clean, and even got these looking good as new, as well, best I can. Yeah, I made the mistake of trying to pull this out, but it actually turns out I've got to take off the whole emblem to get it to come out to change the bulb. Hopefully I did not break the socket. I don't think it worked. But it's no wonder that it looks like it might have been original. But if you've got a Pontiac with side markers, that's what you have to do. You've got to take it out from the inside. Okay, so the proper way to take off the Pontiac side marker is undo these little sort of nuts. Then that bulb is out. It's actually pinned in there. So you push down on the spring. You should be able to turn it. Like that. And that's how you can change the bulb and access the socket. I'm gonna go ahead and unconnect this one. All of our old wiring is now out of the car once I take this up and out. So I did not realize this until I sort of got everything pulled apart. I thought I was going to have to do the whole daisy chain back and forth. The only thing I'm really going to have to actually break off on is the taillight wire will go off to the side marker. There are actually two wires and there are also two wires that split off here for the reverse lights. I didn't realize this, so that's kind of cool. So these are the three wires that go in this side. This is my fuel sending wire. I'll also have to break off a brown wire here and splice it into this one. And these are my three wires for over here. So I was wrong about the daisy chaining of the brown wire. Um, they actually just did the daisy chain to come back out 
to go to the side marker light, which is how I should have left it. I never really needed to touch it. Anyway, that side will be fine. Um, I've got my clip ready for the license plate and the fuel sending unit. And then I've got the left side ready to clip in the left turn signal, reverse light. And um, yeah, that's it. Okay, realizing I didn't need the second wire that's coming out, I took this one out of my, I took it out of the connector and soldered it up. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of tape there just to make sure there's no connection, no contact, put it back in here. The other thing I would suggest if you're gonna use old connectors, um, use a wire brush, use a file, go down through there and make sure you, you've got good connections because the old connectors are old and those terminals have been exposed and it might be a good idea to clean them up. So I'm gonna make sure I go down into, I uh, cleaned this one off clean this one off and I'm going to make sure I go down and get these in here still cleaned off. And she's back together, good as new, and I just have the one wire sticking out. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and put them in. Oh, I always hate cutting wires. I feel like I'm making a huge mistake and it's going to be too short. So I'm going to merge these two wires together. And then this one can go off to my um, side marker light. This one goes in onto the tail lights, and hopefully we're good to go. Okay, so my three wires will go into the connector and I've branched this one off to be my side marker light. And I just need to connect them to this and then connect the switch. And there we go. So I can just connect this to the switch down there. Also, I did want to note there is a third brake light wire that comes with this harness. It only works whenever the brake pedal is depressed. So this one doesn't really help me, but I kept it back here just in case. Um, and I have sealed that one off and I will Tape it up and tuck it under. There, my pet driver's side is plugged in. And the only thing I need to do is the marker light. Once I, once I get a new, uh, once I get a new socket in order to repair the one I broke, but that will go back here. Okay, and I split off my brown wire to go to my license plate bulb. And I've connected the pink wire, which is my fuel sending unit. And then this wire, will, the brown wire, can continue on to the passenger side. Now, I also need to run Now I'm going to have to tape them up first before I run them under the trunk latch. So here we go. My side marker light wire all tucked in. And I've got my license plate and fuel sender connected to the trunk lid. And I'm running my wires down to here. Just have to I have to put this connector and side marker light wire with these wires, plug it in, and I'm finished with the tail light section. All right, so this side is all done. I still need to do something with the wires, but I've got my side marker light hooked up. These wires are in. These wires are in as well. I've got the side marker light and these backlights taken care of. And so, yeah, that is tail light wiring. Like I said, still need to take care of wrapping up a few things, make it look a little neater. Need to get some grommets down in here as well. I cannot tell you how happy I am right now to be done with this project. 
Uh, I'm not going to test it out yet. I've still got a lot of things I need to do. Uh, the starter's not in, in the car. Uh, little things like that that I don't, really don't want to risk um, doing that. I also have a couple more bulbs that I need to connect in the dash. Um, but for the most part, all the sections of the car are done. And I am thrilled because it wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. And of course, you know, I was like all scared to get started and scared to do this and do that. But it's the first time I've ever rewired a car. And now I feel pretty confident uh, in doing it. So yeah, I, would I do it again? Absolutely not. <laughs> um, no, if, if you ask me now, no. But uh, if I did it, it was, you know, was going to do it in the future, I'm like, yeah, this is something I could probably handle. Maybe just a section here or a section there, but uh, got it done. I'm really happy, so I can't test it, but the next video we're gonna be testing, so subscribe to the channel if you can, I'd appreciate it. Uh, click the notifications, that way you see whenever new videos come up. Um, like it if you got anything out of it, that'd be kinda cool. And leave me a comment down below if you have any questions or if I got anything wrong, I would appreciate that. Um, but it was a great learning experience, and uh, yeah. Thank you very much for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.